Um, I really just want to start by thanking you. I, um, I started climbing mountains and hiking when I was 24 years old, which was now a decade ago. And when I was doing that, there simply were no narratives for people that looked like me. There were no women of color, no queer women, no survivors, um, no people with ancestry from the Andes. And so when I found you and found your book, it was just such a mesmerizing moment to see all of those identities that I had reflected finally in adventure narratives and in narratives about nature. Um, so I'm just so grateful that you're here and that you wrote this book. Um, I'm so grateful that these narratives are existing and it just shows that there's such a shift in what is now possible, right? For people that hold identities like us. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and yeah, what I wanted to start talking about first was, was this culture of silence that you bring up so many times in this book. Um, silence shows up a lot and how you end up deciding to break the silence by, by writing this book. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we both come from Latin American families where I know in my family the phrase was bien calladita mas bonita, which meant, you know, the quieter you are, the more beautiful you are. Um, and this is a really common phrase in Mexico and in many other parts of Latin America. Um, and I just feel like there was always this culture of, in the spirit of collectivism, which is very strong in Latin America, um, we tell the story of our families, we tell the story of the collective, but that means sometimes that's at the cost of not telling our individual story, right? Especially if our individual story talks about taboos like sexual abuse or queerness or the many other things that you talk about in this book. Um, so I'm just so curious, how did you navigate that culture of silence, that tension between individually telling your story and the collectivism of Latin America when you were thinking about writing this? For the longest time, kind of keep it silence was almost possibly more valuable uh, just to save face for the family. And we just didn't want to be one of those families who will spill everything out. And it was all about what, you know, lo que dirán, que, que lo que van a decir, which is like what others will say, mm -hmm. in a way. And, and I think especially, you know, having been raised by a mother who had to hide so much of herself who literally couldn't really even find her voice. Um, I thought I, I mean, it was really hard for me and I just didn't want to hurt her. And, and even for me, the idea of writing the book didn't really happen until 2017. Um, and, and, and of course, I mean, unfortunately, like many women, I was self-doubting, you know, mm -hmm. could my story mean anything? Um, but, but this is, and I know while growing up, my mother had a hard time every time we'll come across the issue of my abuse, every time something will help, something will happen, something will trigger, and, and it, it kind of affected her. So I think that I, I wanted to protect her, uh, but also I think I wasn't very uh, comfortable with myself in terms of embodying um, the experience that I wanted to bring out in the world. I mean, I, I still was very much drinking and I wasn't able to, to be sober. So I think there were a lot of conflicting emotions for me, uh, which possibly didn't allow me to stand up to own my voice. Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, it was after my first anniversary of climbing Everest that I got into a horrible bike accident, which landed me, it landed me in the ICU for about 10 days and while I was there, I discovered that I had a small brain tumor at the base of my brainstem, that I felt almost a pressure that life was a ticking clock with me, mm -hmm. and that I just couldn't keep my story inside. And I think it was that possibly push for me to eventually, okay, started putting it out there, I gotta find a way of me sharing this story. And, but I also needed to come clean with my drinking, and so it was, uh, there were still a lot of complexities, I, I wanted to complete climbing the seven summits in a way that that I felt maybe I could you know, tell a full story of, of achieving something in particular and be able to relate it with with just my, my emotions with trauma. But but it took a while, and and I do now advise people uh, who sometimes get very sensitive about not oversharing because of their families. There's never going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even one of my brothers tried to sue me before the book came out um, because he was too embarrassed of everything that I was touching. So there's never going to be a good time to do it. You just need to trust that your voice, that your truth needs to prevail among anything else yeah. and, and go with it.